This is Shin, and this boy unknowingly unlocked his hidden powers while dreaming about girls. And so he tries to go on about his day as usual, but his powers get unlocked whenever girls get in contact with him. So now he finds himself in a pickle, as the first one to fall victim to his powers is Hong, the same girl that bullied him his entire life. After Shin finds himself ganked by Hong, he's unsure on what to do since he's been a soy boy his entire life. Nonetheless, Hong reveals that ever since she made contact with him, she's had this weird feeling she couldn't get rid of as she could only think of him the entire time. So now she's taking the matter into her own hands as Hong cannot stop herself from ganking Shin over and over, almost as if her mind and body have been taken over. But then, just as Hong was about to escalate the event into overdrive, another bright flash illuminates the playground right after she accidentally hit him in the face. Shortly after, Hong's hand that made contact with Shin's face starts to glow, but she also feels even more attracted to Shin after the light explosion. With her hand now glowing, she starts making Shin attack her exposed Egyptian pyramids, as she wants the show to already get rolling. So for the first time ever, our boy gets to visit the realm of manhood as she orders him to keep on attacking not just the pyramids, but also the catacombs below. Eventually, Shin watches on as the bully's pants go flying off into the sky, so he starts tearing up, unable to believe that this is actually happening. She then hands Shin a wrapper to cover up the battering ram he will be using to siege her catacombs, but he's dumbfounded on how to use it, as he's never even held a girl's hand before today. With Hong impatiently waiting for him, she starts insulting him and ends up snatching it from him, claiming that she'll do it for him as she can't wait any longer. Now realizing that this isn't just a prank bro, Shin freezes up as he's stunned in awe, due to him watching Hong putting her hair up aggressively, since that's when we know she's actually serious. A flashback then occurs back to when the two were still in high school, where we discover that Hong had a wide array of boys interested in her. However, she turned down everybody, including the most intimidating jocks from other schools as her and Lin were on a different level as the undisputed queens. But now, that same Hong has Hong Kong's an open display for Shin as she tries her hardest to put on the defensive wrapper before Shin changes his soy boy mind. Eventually, she's able to properly apply the defensive wrapper on the battering ram, so she instantly mounts on the driver's seat, not wanting to let the golden opportunity pass. However, Hong finally realized why she had to retake math class, as her measurement skills were not up to par, this time she misjudged the size of the ram causing the catacombs to struggle. But a little bit of struggle can be instantly fixed with some grease so naturally, Hong's infrastructure allowed the fix to apply instantly, so she starts watering the soil of Shin's banana plantation. Suddenly, two boys from school passing by starts noticing some noise coming from the playground, but the deep invasion of Hong is still ongoing. So the two Randys begin to investigate the surroundings, wondering if there's actually someone nearby. With the boys inching closer by the second, Hong and Shin decide to reconvene their invasion for the next day, as they don't want to get caught in plain sight. And so our boy heads home, somehow managing to not explode at all during the attack, so he's happy although quite confused on what just happened. Upon arriving at home still flustered, he tries to smack himself awake, thinking that maybe this is all just a dream, but he finds himself still stuck in reality. With his mom still away at the World Sorcerer's Forum, he goes to finish up his chores, only to find the altar at the shrine room glowing, with one of the seven panels fully lit up. He then catches himself looking at a mirror, but he instantly recoils away, after being shocked at the sight of a glowing handprint on his face. As such, he swiftly hurries to the nearby clinic, but he discovers that no one else can see the handprint except himself. Shin then gets frustrated as he goes around attempting to show off the glowing handprint on his face, but no one can see it causing them to think he might be going crazy. With no one able to understand what's exactly wrong with him, he starts thinking that maybe it is him, maybe he is going crazy. With it finally dawning on Shin that he could be the problem, he allows himself to get admitted in, just so they could do a routine checkup on him. And so he lays on his bed awaiting to do some tests so they can get to the bottom of his problem. But for now, they assume it's related to stress due to his university entrance exam coming up soon. Luckily for Shin, his stay in all the tests will be free of charge, as the doc knows his mom, who apparently has helped multiple people within the community, so she's well known. With him resting, Shin feels uneasy at the thought of not being able to do his duty, so he decides to look for a nearby nurse so he can ask if he can sort things out first. And so he whips open the curtain, only to find the one on duty to be his type in terms of body preferences. With him staring at some rice cakes for a very long time, she eventually turns, but Shin is able to avoid getting caught, since he plays a lot of stalker games. But just as he thought he was safe, a woman approaches from beyond the curtain, looking exactly like the girl he was staring at. So before she can open up the curtain, he starts making up excuses that he wasn't able to see anything, since he's blind like a bat without glasses. 
With Shin now frantically attempting to salvage the situation, he keeps trying to make an excuse to no avail. However, it turns out to actually be his mom behind the curtain, so he's able to stop sweating as if he's trying to clutch the final overtime round in a ranked game. She then starts asking what the heck happened to cause him being admitted in by the dock, so he tries to explain the sticky situation he's in. He then attempts to explain that he found the altar randomly glowing, and when he looked in the mirror, there was a handprint glowing on his face too. Upon hearing what happened, a mom looks like as if she saw a ghost, so she sits down wanting to know more about the handprint on his face. With things starting to add up, she starts asking if the girl happens to be the eldest daughter of the Jew family, to which Shin surprisingly confirms her suspicions. The mom then falls to her knees, clutching her hands together as if she's praying, thankful to the heavens that they have finally answered her prayers. She then reveals the secret that Shin was destined for greatness ever since he was born, but his magical energy was too powerful to contain inside a child boy. Eventually, she had come to paths that she needed to share his powers with others for the time being, to prevent him from perishing as his body was beginning to succumb to the void. So instead, she split up his energy between seven other children fated to disappear from the world, allowing them to live on and prosper using his energy. And ever since then, she's been praying to the gods to allow him to regain the destiny that he was foretold, but Shin initially refuses to believe his mom. Eventually, he gives in to the possibility that it's all true, since it explains the reason why he can see a handprint from Hong exuding from his face. She then continues on, coming to terms with the fact that it might now be time for Hong to return his powers, which is why their touch now elicits an electric reaction. With the onset of the new information, Shin gets a little bit scared for Hong since he's a nice guy, not wanting to accidentally destroy her life for reclaiming his lost energy. Nevertheless, the mom also explains that once his energy finally recognizes its master, he'll be desperately attracted to him like a super magnet, wanting to return home instead of being trapped somewhere else. This explains why Hong has now decided to act up as his energy is turning her into the biggest sussy baka ever. So basically, it sounds to me like his mom did him a favor, setting him up in the future with seven girls all wanting every piece of our boy. Now, she's a true wingman as she was able to predict that her soy boy son would have trouble with girls. So she gave him seven bombshells to choose from in the future. Anyways, even after Hong's catacombs got invaded by Shin, she's still unable to control her inner cravings as she continually becomes super thirsty for Shin water. At the same time, Shin's mom starts thinking of ways to allow his lost energy to transfer back to him. So she asks if she's done anything out of the ordinary lately. But of course, he denies it all. He then proceeds to kick his mom out of the room, too embarrassed to explain that for the first time ever, his banana tree plantation received its very first visitor. As she heads back home, she starts thinking of ways to help her son out in arranging his destiny. However, she doesn't remember all seven kids that harness his powers, but all she can remember is the fact that they were all indeed girls. And so she decides to become the local detective, wanting to do the best for her son. But she doesn't realize one of them literally just passed by her. Meanwhile, inside Shin's room, he starts piecing things together, trying to comprehend the entire information bomb that was just dropped on him. As he tries to make sense of everything, a wild Hong appears looking absolutely frustrated, shouting at Shin, wondering why he hasn't returned any of her calls. She then sits down while our boy is busy thinking if this is the crazy girlfriend he reads about on anime, since how can Hong even find out where he is? As Hong sits down, unable to truly express why she's here to visit him, our boy continues his non-soy boy rampage, telling Hong that yesterday was the last time he will ever let her bully him around. And so he gets up, commanding the fiery red head to go find someone else to take advantage of, since he isn't going to buy any more wrappers for anyone else. Hong then looks on shocked, unable to believe that Shin actually walked out on her. But the entire time, she's only been trying to hint she wants an appointment for an attack into the catacombs.